Was I wrong about the Sawstop job site table saw? The latest, the greatest from Sawstop. It is a very expensive saw as far as job site saws go at $8.99 plus whatever tax and shipping will be to you. Now, this is an excellent saw. I've been highly impressed with what I've seen, except for the one thing that I was sort of wrong about, the fence. Now, the fence is one of those things that has to be right on a table saw, or there's really no reason to have a table saw. However, the issue I had was that at full extension, it had a little bit of slop. I purchased this saw stop on a pre-order because I was excited to get it. And when it come in, I was more than disappointed that the fence was less than what I thought it should be. I went to SawStop's website and contacted their technical support and got an email back, which some people said I was lying about that, but here it is, is what they said. I sent video of the slack in the fence to SawStop and asked if that was normal, or was I missing an adjustment? And this is where I don't think I was wrong in my initial assessment, because the email I got back was, Good afternoon, Matt. Yes, that amount of play at full extension seems to be normal from what we can tell with all the CTSs we have looked at. I was bum fuzzled by that. I thought, man, how could you let that go? Like, it, this is a very expensive table saw. Now, at that point, I just assumed, and I emailed back and said it was unfortunate. I was a little disappointed uh, just because I previously owned the full size saw stop. So, from their answer at that point, I thought, man, this thing is really flawed, but I was wrong. Again, sort of. I got another email from somebody named Dave with tech support there. I gave him my phone number, he called me, and they sent me a PDF how to adjust this saw stop to get that slop out of there. It does introduce a new problem or a new annoyance. I wouldn't call it a problem, but we did fix the actual vertical up and down play that was in the fence. During the phone calls back and forth about this, the last phone call actually, I was told that this wasn't meant to be a precision table saw like the PCS, which I understand, but at the same time, for $900 at a saw stop level saw, it should have been better in my opinion. What do you think? Now to adjust the fence, to tighten that play up and get that out of there, it's actually extremely easy. All you have to do is right here on each corner, all four corners, there is a round piece. It's actually not round, it's a cam. In other words, it's oblong. You loosen a little bolt inside there and you turn that cam slightly until you get slack out of the fence. Then once that is done on all four corners, you have it adjusted to where it's snug. You can run the entire fence all the way out, lock it in place. If it's not locked, it will still have a little play and the vertical movement is essentially gone. Now you may see that flexing a little bit, but that's actually the entire saw flexing. It's not the fence. You can see the tabletop and all moving, which is fine as long as everything moves together, you shouldn't have an issue. Also, this piece in the middle on the front and the back are basically two wedges. All you have to do is loosen the bolt and then you can slide those wedges apart, which basically creates another wedge inside the fence and that uh, tightens everything up. So you have a super snug fit all the way across as far out as you can extend the fence, which is great. It works great now. The minor annoyance is now introduced because you've tightened everything up, correct? So it depends on how snug you want your fence as to how much you have to deal with here. Now what I'm talking about is the actual movement of the fence is quite a bit stiffer and harder to move once you tighten everything up. I mean, it's perfectly, it makes perfect sense that it's going to do that, but uh, there's gotta be a happy medium there or it just, it gets too hard to move. When I first tightened everything up, it was extremely hard to move. For the first few days of me using the saw, playing with the saw, just messing with it, it was like really had to get down on it to make it move. Now it's just slightly snug. That raises a few concerns that I'll talk about later in this review, but I want to go through everything that I really like about the saw now, and then we'll talk about a few things that I wish was different or I can see problems with. One thing to note, if you buy the saw, then some you may or may not have the fence issue that I had. Mr. Ron Park on his channel did a video on his. They sent him his saw stop, and when he got his, they didn't, he didn't have any issue at all. He actually had to loosen the cam to create the fence uh, slack. So uh, you may or may not have that issue. I did comment on that video and asked Mr. Paul a couple times if he has a tight fence once he adjusted it, but he hasn't gotten back to me as of the filming of this video. If you'd like to check out this saw for yourself, I'll put a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment. So what do I like about the saw stop compact job site table saw? I love the fence if it's dialed in. What I really like about it though is the rack and pinion, the DeWalt, uh, job site saws and several other models have rack and pinion fences also. But what that essentially means 
is it's gear driven. So when you turn back here, there's a gear here, there's a rod that connects both the back and the front gears. So when you're turning it, the back and the front are moving exactly the same. That's gonna keep the fence nice and square to the miter slot and the blade. Another thing I really like about this saw is how easy it is to actually adjust that fence to square it up to the miter slot should you need to do that. All you do is loosen that bolt right there with an Allen wrench or that one actually, whichever one you're mounting it on. You can use either one of those posts. You get more rip capacity by simply moving this out to the outer edge. So you really need to check both posts to make sure they're square to the miter slot because you want to square the blade to the miter slot and then the miter slot to the fence. That way everything is square to each other. After you take any minor adjustments that may or may not be needed, then this thing's ready to go. I really like how fast you can adjust the angle or the miter cuts on this, this saw. You actually pull on this little handle and then it moves with ease, uh, whatever, whatever angle you need all the way up to 47 or back to negative two. You can also micro adjust the angle simply by turning the dial, which I really like that too, because you can really dial in those fine cuts. Another thing that I appreciate about SawStop is that it comes with a zero clearance throat plate. What that means is you're gonna get a cleaner cut on most all of your woods, plywood, hardwoods, softwoods, everything, because you got that less tear out on the bottom. Another thing I've really liked about using the saw is it's heavy enough that it doesn't move around on top of the workbench while you're cutting and mainly because these rubber feet are kind of a non-slip grip. So when you're pushing wood through, you don't have it moving a lot, but it's not so heavy that you can't move it around the job site or take it with you, throw it in the truck, things like that. Another thing I like about the saw stop is the onboard tool storage. Now this is a very nice feature that they've included with the saw. I haven't seen any other saw like this. I've got the DeWalt in and it's, it seems like an afterthought on the DeWalt. This was planned out and you can tell it. I really appreciate that the wrenches are included in this little kit right here. Uh, in other words, everything's gonna be right here located for you. Inside the kit, you get your blade guard that's nicely secured in there. You get the riving knife that attaches to the blade guard, although there is another riving knife that is already on the saw. So you can only use this if you're gonna use the blade guard and the anti-kickback paws, which are also in your little kit. And then you also get a miter gauge in there. What is nice is if you're like me, you forget how things go. There are pictures in there to kind of let you know how to put everything in, even a detailed instruction on which to put in first and last. And because this is a full 10 inch blade, then you get that full cut depth that you would normally get on most other bigger saws. As a matter of fact, it's the same cut depth as on my SawStop PCS. Now, a couple of questions that came up on the first impressions video is, will this accept a dado stack? And the answer is absolutely not. This thing is maxed out with just a regular full curve blade on it. So you're not gonna have enough arbor space for a dado stack. And I know a lot of people are like, and for that reason, I'm out. So another question I got was, why would you deactivate the safety feature? One of the main reasons is if you're cutting wet or damp wood, that wet wood or aluminum, it can trip the blade because it's gonna basically conduct electricity. You can see when I touch the blade with my hand up here, the red light starts flashing to let me know that there's contact there, the circuit has been broken or completed, however you wanna look at it, and it's not gonna let me turn it on at that point. But there is a way to bypass that should you need it. So I wanted to see how accurate the saw actually is after I adjusted it in the first video. So what I did was I just took a piece of MDF because it's cheap, then I just used the five cut method at about nine and a half inches or so. So on the five cut method, all you're doing is cutting each side at the same distance away from the blade. So you just rotate, rotate, rotate until you get to the fourth side. On the fifth cut, when you rotate it, you're gonna cut slightly more. Also, you have a sliver of that piece. Then you can measure each end and that's going to tell you how accurate your saw is or how accurate the fence is to the blade. This one was dead on, 9.44 millimeters. And I don't normally use millimeters, but. Next, I wanted to extend the fence all the way out and cut a piece of MDF just to see how accurate it was at full extension. It's just under 20 and 5 eighths. And you do actually get a four more inches of rip capacity. You just move the fence over to that second post as we discussed earlier. But this was dead on at 20 and just slightly under 5 eighths of an inch. That proves to me that the saw is accurate at any length. And the original fence issue is actually a non-issue, especially now that it's basically tightened up, there's no slack in it. And this is gonna cut through most anything you're gonna throw at it. You're looking at, I've cut walnut with it, I've cut pine, I've cut MDF, I've cut spruce, no issues at all. It's not bogging down anything. The saw has plenty of power to do what you're gonna ask it to do. 
Dust collection is done with two and a quarter inch hose. So if you've got a shop vac or something similar to that, it's gonna connect right in there, which is perfect for most job sites if you even care about sawdust on the job site. But if you're working in the shop, you're gonna to wanna to control that dust and you can do so easily with a standard shop vac hose. After having this for a couple of months and using it on a few projects, I can tell you this is a very good saw. Who's gonna buy this at $8.99? Number one, the person who's concerned about their safety, those fingers. Now, this is a good saw for the price you're paying for. What you're paying for is the safety feature. While it is very nice, it is a very high-end saw, you're paying for the safety feature. I mean, there's no if, ands, or buts about that. I also like that it's fairly robust. I mean, this is a very well-built uh, saw. The only thing I would be concerned about is if the saw fence is extended, if you flipped it over, then it's just thin aluminum, it would likely bend. If you drop this out of the bed of a truck, if, you, uh, if it falls off a saw horses or whatever could happen on the job site, pretty much any job site saw is built like this. It's very thin aluminum, all this stuff here. And the main point of having a table saw is that accurate fence, so don't drop it. Another feature I like, but I wish was better, is the high-low fence. Basically, you can flip this fence portion over to either create a low fence if it's next to the blade, or it can actually be a work support when fully extended as you saw when I was cutting the MDF. Now, a couple of things I would really like for them to change on this in future iterations is this, there's a little spring or a little piece of metal wire that actually holds that in place when you flip it over to store it away. One side of mine broke the first day I had it. I was just using it normally when I popped it up like that, the piece of wire come out and I, I couldn't figure out how to get it back in there because it was bent and it just, just broke. And so the other side still works, so it holds it in there, which is not a big deal, except if you left the fence up here during transport, it could fall out of there. I'd never had a job site saw before this saw stop. So I wondered, is a $900 saw stop job site saw that much better built than say something like a DeWalt job site saw? So I bought this one for $300. That one cost me over $900. What do you think? Is there gonna be a major difference? And should I do a comparison video on these two? Let me know. I do like the fact that there's a sticker on the side that tells you the status lights of the power indicators, those two lights we saw flashing earlier. I like that saw stop includes six of these adjustment points on this saw, so or on the throat plate, so you can really dial that in and get it perfectly flush all the way across the table saw. Most job site saws only have four, and while that's okay, it's gonna work all right, I just think it's better when you have more ways to adjust that to get everything perfectly flat. And this throat plate is extremely solid right in the middle. It's not flexing or bending right at the blade, which can be a problem on some job site saws. Overall, if you're in the market for this saw and you buy it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. My previous video before I got the pertinent information on how to actually adjust that, you can take that with a grain of salt. I wish they would have included that with the original uh, saw and originally gave me the correct answer when I reached out versus saying all of them do that. Now that I know that it can be adjusted, I really think this is a solid buy, especially if you're in the market for a safer table saw. So if you're concerned about safety, this honestly is the cheapest saw stop you can buy at $8.99 plus whatever tax and shipping is. This is a very good saw if you want the safety feature. If you don't want the safety feature, I've got a DeWalt job site saw in the shop that I'll be doing a review on soon. So be sure and hit that subscribe button, bell icon so you don't miss it. If you like this video, click that box right there where you can see my initial impressions and you can find out that the fence issue really wasn't an issue. So click that box, click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. I can admit when I'm wrong. And then click that box right there if you wanna watch another awesome video.